I'm reacting to what Greg McElroy said regarding BYU's transition to the Big 12. It's fascinating, great quote. Let's get into it. Welcome to Y Central. Let's go. So Greg McElroy on his podcast was talking about the Big 12 schedule release and he had about a minute snippet where he talks about BYU. I'm going to play that for you right here. BYU, I think, is very well equipped to be able to step right in to the Big 12. They've played gauntlets of schedules before. Being an independent, they've gone back to back at Tennessee and then USC comes to their place. They've played against four or five Pac-12 opponents in a given season. Now, I think the Big 12 collectively pretty good brand of football. But I think BYU is extremely well equipped to be able to handle it week in and week out. I love what Greg McElroy said. He said BYU is extremely well equipped to make the jump to the Big 12. He said that BYU has played gauntlet of schedules, referencing the back-to-back -back with Tennessee and then USC, which by the way, BYU won both those games. He mentioned playing five Pac-12 teams in one season, which they went 5-0 and against those teams. So I want to talk about why Greg McElroy is correct, why BYU is extremely well equipped to make this transition, more so than the normal uh, non-P5 moving into a P5 conference team's transition would be. The first reason is our history and record against P5s, particularly in the recent history. Looking back at the, the schedules, since 2019, BYU is 10-5 and five against P5 opponents. And if you count Houston, who now will be a member of the Big 12, BYU is 11-5. and five. So that's not just like a 50% winning percentage. That's we're consistently winning these games against P5s. And not just winning these games, in some cases dominating. And back-to-back -back wins. I love the reference to the USC game, the Tennessee game. Tennessee on the road. Uh... 2018, so this is more than just since 2019, but going on the road to Wisconsin, beating them. Uh, BYU is well equipped. 11 and 5 the past since 2019. That's pretty remarkable. The second reason why BYU is extremely well equipped our offense. Uh, our offense isn't just good, they have the potential to be great. I know we're replacing some, produc some production. Jaron Hall, Chris Brooks, Puka Nakua. But let's just consider who BYU has. Keaton Slovis, at one point, was Todd McShay's number one rated quarterback prospect for the future NFL draft. The past couple seasons, he's been injury riddled. The same thing happened to Zach sophomore year, Jaron this year. When you have a quarterback who's injured, of course it's going to affect their production a little bit. But Keaton Slovis, in the A-Rod system, we've seen what's happened with Zach. With Jaron, Keaton Slovis, I think is going to be a problem. His potential, what we know he can be if healthy, what he did his freshman year at, Utah, at USC in this system, he might be the best quarterback in the Big 12. If he plays like he did in 2019, where he was a potential number one draft pick, number one quarterback prospect, then yes, he will be the best quarterback in the Big 12. Let's look at our running backs. Aiden Robbins, transfer from UNLV last season, over 1,000 yards rushing, nine touchdowns, a 4.8 yard per carry average. This guy is a beast. He, he's 6'3", 230. He's bigger than Chris Brooks. He's faster than Chris Brooks. He is an animal with an NFL body. I think he'll be an NFL running back. Let's also talk about LJ Martin, four-star recruit from Texas, we have Hinkley Rapati, who we know had big game against Stanford, big game against Boise State last year. Miles Davis, who ran for 130 against Wyoming last year. Our running back room is stacked. Let's look at wide receivers. Our big three, our trio of Chase Roberts, Keanu Hill, Cody Epps. All those guys are elite wide receivers. Now, after that, it's a little more thin, inexperienced. Uh, and there's some guys who are going to have big opportunities to step up, just like Chase Roberts and Cody Epps did this year. Just because they're inexperienced doesn't mean they don't have talent. One guy I'm really looking forward to is JoJo Phillips from Sierra Canyon, Brawny's teammate. I think he's 
he'll come in and make a big contribution. I like what we have in our depth wide receiving core. Let's look at tight ends. Isaac Rex, he's an established beast. We know who he is. Jackson Bowers coming in, four-star recruit. Uh, our tight end room is going to be looking really good too. And let's talk about our offensive line. The past two years, we've been dominant. Blake Freeland to the NFL. Brady Christensen to the NFL. Uh, a couple guys this year transferring to Baylor. Our offensive line is consistently dominant. The quarterbacks have all day to throw. So the all-line will not miss a beat. Let's talk briefly about the defense. I'm not going to really get into the defense that much, but we've got a new coach, Jay Hill, bringing in his staff, new scheme, new energy, new transfers coming in with a lot of good returners as well. Chaz Ayu, Max Tooley. We've got some guys on this defense, and with the new scheme, the new energy, our defense is going to be better too. Lastly, let's talk about recruiting class. BYU this year had its best recruiting class since 2016. Look, it's not at the top of the Big 12, but BYU is already out recruiting based on the rankings, out recruiting multiple Big 12 opponents. And if you consider BYU going 11 and 5, if you count Houston, against P5 opponents since 2019, and you consider that our recruiting this year is better than it has been since 2016, it just goes to show you that BYU consistently outperforms and outdevelops its recruiting rankings. I mean, look at Zach and Jaron. They were both three-star quarterback recruits, and they're both NFL draft picks. So BYU's development and coaching prowess will continue, and our recruiting will just continue to improve. There is not a more exciting time than right now to be a BYU fan. I think our transition into the Big 12 won't be perfect. It won't be seamless, but we're ahead of where most teams transferring into a P5 conference are at. We're in a good spot. Like Greg McElroy said, we are extremely well equipped. I cannot wait to see BYU perform this year and I think turn a lot of heads. I'm curious what you think. What are you most excited about BYU's transition? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and go Cougs.